What's going on everybody? Happy Wednesday. Today's report is brought to you by our friends at Facilo Kia of Cape Coral. And today, we're gonna to be talking about what changes are coming from election recount totals, a fatal crash that happened on Monday, and should we be worried about a system forming in the Caribbean? Thank you for stopping by. Today is Wednesday, November 14th. I'm Jared Brady, and this is your Naples Herald Daily Report. Recounts wrapping up in small and mid-sized counties are showing few changes to initial results in the races for governor, U.S. Senate, and agricultural commissioner. But bigger counties still have until Thursday afternoon to complete the state-mandated recount process. In Leon County, where election officials completed running more than 140,000 ballots through tabulating machines Tuesday afternoon, the candidates in the major statewide races all lost several votes. Recounted numbers in Citrus County found two additional votes each for Republican gubernatorial candidate Ron DeSantis, U.S. Senate candidate Rick Scott, and Agricultural Commissioner candidate Matt Caldwell. In Alachua County, Democratic U.S. Senator Bill Nelson's lead over Scott among county voters actually grew by 26 votes. Statewide, Nelson trailed Scott by over 12,000 votes when unofficial results were posted Saturday after the November 6th election. But, while political arguments and lawsuits have put the focus of the recount on Palm Beach and Broward counties, Leon County Supervisor of Elections Mark Early said he doesn't expect there to be any dramatic changes in the statewide vote totals. And Scott's recount attorney Tim Serio said that as of Tuesday afternoon, 25 counties had completed recounting and the process had started in all but Clay County, where 90,000 ballots were tabulated in the first unofficial totals. A fatal crash in Lee County is under investigation after a two-car accident left a five-year-old boy dead on Monday morning. A report from the FHP states that the driver of a Dodge Ram failed to stop at a stop sign and traveled directly into the path of 33-year-old Ashley Green of Fort Myers, striking the right side of her minivan with the front of the truck. The force of the impact flipped the truck upside down and pushed it off the road while the minivan veered off the road and into a ditch nearby. Green was taken to Lehigh Regional for treatment along with her two other passengers, a five-year-old boy and two-year-old girl. The five-year-old boy, Connor Green, died of his injuries. He was listed in the FHP report as being in a seatbelt or child restraint during the time of the crash, and the Dodge Ram was being driven by a 17-year-old male and contained three other teenage passengers all of whom sustained minor injuries. The FHP report stated that the crash is still under investigation and that the charges are pending and that alcohol was not listed as a factor in the crash. According to the National Hurricane Center, a cluster of showers and thunderstorms near the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico is unlikely to develop into a tropical system. The showers, part of a tropical wave and an upper level low, have been moving northwestward over the last few days towards the Caribbean and have been given relatively decent odds of developing into what really would have been the 17th system of 2018. But now that the wave is interacting with land, the odds of development have dropped significantly, so we can all breathe here in Southwest Florida. But on Tuesday, the National Hurricane Center gave the wave just a 10% chance of developing over the next 48 hours and 20% in the next five days, citing both the interaction with land and unfavorable conditions with the upper level winds. But either way, the system appears to continue to move toward the west-northwest over the next several days. And just a reminder that the official end date of hurricane season is November 30th. Now that just about does it for us here today. If you like what you heard and you want some more information about what's going on around your area or just Southwest Florida in general, head on over to our website at naplesherald.com. Check us out on social media. And if you're watching on YouTube, click that red button you see down there and subscribe to our page. Again, thank you for stopping by. I'm Jared Brady, and that was your Naples Herald Daily Report.